lies! You're just saying that to trick me again! From the moment I was brought here, everyone despised me. I tried, but it was over before it started! So even if the whole world speaks ill of you, I'll tell them they're wrong. I'll defend you. Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Marathon Night, where we take on a series, we marathon through it, and we give you guys our thoughts on the series as it goes on. I am your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. I hope everybody is having an awesome day when you are listening to this, and joining to me today is my lovely wife, Andrea. Andrea, how are you? Oh, good. So, we just barely got done recording one podcast, and now we've got to do another. And this one, I'm kind of excited for, because I've been wanting to know Andrea's thoughts on what we saw with it and this is rising of the shield hero a controversial anime that came out in 2020 um and controversial in in the sense of what the the not necessarily the source material but the material that is in the series we're going to talk about a lot of that today because a lot of it was in the introduction of the series so uh initially well we'll we'll get into kind of final thoughts on this one but let's let's bounce right into this shall we uh or or do you want to explain like your well let's do this after three episodes what's your take on this series are you happy to to go forward or are you bored with it no i'm happy what what did you think like right after the three episodes like were you just excited to go and watch the next one or yeah i was excited to go forward okay so it wasn't like a meh you know, like, I, I'm not interested. Yeah. It was more like, a, oh, okay, I'm I'm looking forward to this next session. Yeah, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and start things up with episode one, uh, which is The Shield Hero. <clears throat> so we first meet uh, our main character, Naofumi Iwatani, uh, who is a, a college student, a, or a, a college student and otaku. He had a job, but I guess he's he's quit that job because he's uh, he's helping out his little brother with his schooling, and their parents are paying him to be able to do that, so he has a little bit more extra time, and he admits that he's in with that extra time he's indulging his inner otaku, which it, do you know what otaku means? No, otaku is the Japanese word basically for anime fan. Okay, so. Uh, so at that point, like he, you know, he's helping out with his brother, but then at the same time, he gets to go play games, go read manga, things like that. And when he doesn't have money, he goes to the library to be able to go and get like a, a novella or something like that to tide him over. And at the library, he comes across, uh, a manga called the Cardinal Four Heroes, to which it has a description of, um, all of the heroes that are the spear hero, the sword hero, the bow hero, and then finally the shield hero. And when he tries to go into the story, the pages all become blank. And all of a sudden a bright light comes around him and he is immediately in a room with a bunch of people. Yes, this is an isekai. Uh, do you know what that term means? No. Isekai is basically a, a genre of anime where uh, it, I think it literally translates out to another world. Uh, it, it's kind of like with uh, what what a good example would be Inuyasha, where Kagome Kagome ends up in another world, feudal Japan, as a modern girl, and has to go slay demons, kind of thing. That's that's the term for isekai. Mm. Uh, so Rising the Shield Hero is the exact same thing, and uh, when they end up in the room, he is with three other guys that he doesn't know. Uh, all of which, for some reason, have weapons. Uh, so one of them has a sword, one of them has a spear, one of them has a bow, and one of the and now Fumi has the shield. So, and and the monks basically explain that they have summoned the four cardinal heroes. So now this isn't looking to be very much of a manga, now is it? Mm. Uh, it's actually looking to be very real. So they get taken to the king. And the king explains why he has summoned them. They are in the uh, the continent of Melramark. And they have been summoned because Melramark has a prophecy that uh, basically what will happen is over time, waves of destruction 
will come and wipe out the people of Melramark, and the only way to be able to fend these off is with the help of the Cardinal Four Heroes. The Spear Hero, the Shield Hero, the Sword Hero, and the Bow Hero. And so at that point, they summoned the four heroes to combat these waves of destruction. I should say, initially, that they tried to summon just the three heroes, because there's a little bit of an emphasis in this episode that the shield hero is weak uh, and, and is not worthy to be summoned because it's just a shield. It's a piece of armor. Even now, Fumi, when he starts up, uh, when this episode starts up, he, he goes, well, a shield is just a piece of armor, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Have you ever seen Captain America? Captain America made it work. He made it work, right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe you could, you know, you know, you could get your your head out of your ass and realize that maybe the shield could be used as a weapon, but I guess their intention was to summon the three, and that's okay because they'll they'll still utilize them. And they, uh, the way that it works is, uh, they have to go and this is the weird part about this is that it is a real world in a sense, but to the heroes, it's like a video game because they can actually see like stat screens and things like that behind their like in their sight, but nobody else can see them mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and we get to see that through now Fumi, like he gets to see like these three little dots in his sight. He focuses on them and then he gets his, his stat screen, his status screen. And what's weird and weirder still about this is that all of the people of Melramark know about this. So yeah, weird, weird, weird. And, and, and in some cases they have dialogue that makes it sound like they know it's a game. Um, but they immediately want to go and start up the, their, their journey, the all four heroes. But apparently the four heroes cannot journey together because if the weapons are too close to each other after a while, they will create problems. Like they'll, they'll have destruct, they'll create destruction all their own. So they have to get parties. And so what the king does is basically say, go and sleep in our luxurious quarters and we will have your, your people uh, or we'll have our, our local heroes kind of come and you can select your parties there. So they all go up and we get to meet the other four heroes or the yeah, other the three, three heroes. Um, and give me a second because I, I can't remember their full names off the top of my head. But uh, like immediately, Andrea, what do you think of the premise here? is, you know, these four heroes have been summoned to take care of waves of destruction and it feels like a game and all that. What What's what's your feel on that? Um, I don't know. I mean, it just... It's just the typical... There's no such thing as I don't know. Just, well, why are you just asking what, me? Just what are you thinking? Okay, no, that's fine. But, so, you, I'm asking you, like, given the premise of what you're walking into with the series, is it enough to keep you motivated or or does it sound dumb no that's just it's just okay. how it how it usually goes it's like the introduction okay so here are the three other heroes we have motoyasu kitamura uh who is the spear hero uh he is like this is the funny part is that now fumi is like 20 and i think he's 21 so they're the older of the four they're college students and uh, what 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 are your thoughts on Motoyasu as a uh, the spear hero as a character? He's kind of the jock. Yeah, it, the it's jock. Safe to say. uh, the jock who's kind of a jerk of the of the group. So. Yeah, yeah. He he is he's the jock of the group. He's he's very <laughs> jerkish when it comes to a lot of his his viewpoints. Full of himself, you know. Yeah. But he is the spear hero. We then have, uh, let's see if I can bring these up. Red Amaki, who is the sword hero. He is, I think, the younger of the other two. They're all they're both high school students, and he is the sword hero. Uh, what did you think of Ren? He's probably kind of like the, uh, like the. Kind of like the let's get down to business sort of thing. He, he's kind of the strong, silent type. He's not like he doesn't like the small talk or anything like that. He just kind of wants to get to it. Eh, yeah, he's just kind of like, 
he he's the strong silent type ma- man of action roughly cuz like Moto ya- like spear hero he could he could go and have fun in a tavern well the but... the he's the spear hero is just kind of like you know he's just <clears throat> trying to talk himself to make himself the big whereas the mm-hmm. other guy is like eh whatever like like ren so Moto yasu kind of gives the the feeling that um he's all talk but ren is all walk and is all, kind of what you're saying mo- yeah mostly he's like you could just talk <clears throat> your way through this whole thing i'm just gonna get into the action and just be done with it okay and then we also have the so then we have the bow hero who is itsuki kawasumi and i think he's the youngest i think ren is 18 and he is 17 Mm-hmm. And how would you describe <laughs> the bow hero? I think he's kind of like the words of wisdom. Yeah, you know, kind of like the strategist, more like you know, strategist, pla- more more mentally, like I don't want to say mentally open, but he's the thinker. He's the strategist of them, and he just like plans his, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, what would you what do you think of Naofumi, uh initially? Because the only thing I could say is like he's he's kind he's he's naive and he's impulsive. Um, I I say naive because you know he's like he's used to his life, but he's also very impulsive in the fact that you know he just kind of acts out of straightforwardness, not necessarily out of insult or anything like that. Because one of the scenes that happens is he insults the king when everybody's kind of speaking in RPG speak. He goes, hey, yo, king. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and and so at that point, I'd say impulsive is probably how. I mean, there are other words I'd use, but right now, just given their meaning. So they all meet and immediately, is it safe <clears throat> to say their, their personalities are kind of clashing? A little bit, yeah. Spear and shield definitely are. Uh, but you kind of get the feeling that sword and bow are... Trying to play, as yeah. The, they're, they're they're the middle people. That or they right. they're at least looking at this from uh, an a, a less aggressive point of view. Uh, so at that point, I, I like that concept. But uh, immediately, they all kind of write off the shield hero is weak. Oh, we, the other thing we also should point out: apparently, they are all from different alternate realities of Japan, and they compare this by basically saying, "He was on the ten dollar yen bill." And they all have different answers. And all of the, the comparisons of what they think this game is is all based off of different MMOs based in their in their realities, except for Nalfumi. Nalfumi is the only one that isn't playing a game. Uh they're all they're all playing a an MMO and, and he isn't, and that's why they all think that the Shield Hero is weak, because there are shielder classes in all of those MMOs and the shielders are weak. Kind of thing. So, at that point, uh, what what did you think of their treatment of Nalfumi and the fact that he is the shield hero? Well, obviously, if they are all playing some type of video game or MMO of some sort, then obviously they think you know he doesn't have any knowledge or experience whatsoever. They do treat him like a like a novice, but at the same time, uh, what also happens is because he's the shielder, uh, they all kind of or Motoyasu in particular kind of gives the impression that he's better than him because he's not the filthy shielder kind of thing. Safe to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, the shielder of those MMOs might be the tank of the, of the MMO. I don't see why there would be uh, a, a problem there aside from if you want to do like the, the fat damage numbers, but that's the way that they kind of look at it. So they have their their discussion, and then the next day they get to meet all of the adventurers that are willing to go out and help them. And immediately the the adventurers basically get to pick who they want to who they want to party with. Nobody picks the shield hero, and in fact, we find out that there's apparently a rumor going on uh, going on about the shield hero right now uh, because of his treatment of the king the previous day. Even though he wasn't being disrespectful, you know he did. Forgive, you know, he said, I apologize, you know, how can I properly address you and all that? Uh, the rumor is, is that he's ungrateful, he's uh, he's rude, he's condescending, er- like everything that, you know, he he's an evil dude, basically, is what they're trying to say. And so none of these party members want to party with him. 
And in turn, that creates a problem because, as we'll find out later, uh, the shield hero is not really able to fight for himself. Uh, whereas the other ones can, and in this world, they are to earn experience points. And so for the spear, the shield, and the bow, or for the spear, the she the sword, and the bow, that's not hard. But for the shield hero, it is. Uh, because he can't kill anything. His stats are, his, uh, his mm. offensive stats are worthless. Uh, but it just so happens that one of the, one of the girls that now Fumi was looking at as, as seeing is pretty hot. Um, from the Spear Heroes team actually says, I'll, I'll go with the, with the Shield Hero, and he's totally excited about that. And they also get kind of their initial, uh, you know, their initial amount of money in order to be able to buy supplies and, and ar weapons and armor. And well, not weapons, but armor. Uh, so immediately what happens is they all go off and, and start off, and when Naofumi is out with uh, this girl who we find out is named Mine. Uh, Mine decides, uh, like, Naofumi is is a fish out of water. He doesn't know what to do here, and so he relies heavily on Mine to go and get armor, to go and get uh, supplies, to go and get food, etc. And, and it looks like she's being kind of sensible in what she's spending, but then we kind of notice that uh, for example, she kind of also goes and gets things for her. Uh, so like when they're at the armor store, uh, Naofumi gets a, like a set of leather armor, basically, that, that's pretty effective. And then mine goes and gets a big set of plate armor for herself. Oh, jeez. You remember that? Like yes. she, she, she was wearing leather armor when they met her. And then she goes and uses Naofumi's money to get this plate armor because, and her justification is like, well, I'm going to have to go and attack for you, right? Uh, so, now Fumi doesn't really object to this. Uh, they go and get supplies, and they actually start up their journey with these little balloon things, and now Fumi tries to kill off a few. He, you know, he kind of can, but mine has to go and get a, a decent amount of experience, but they also can look off in the distance, and Motoyasu, Ren, and, and Itsuki are not having any trouble killing these things. So, they call it a day, uh, and they plan to go to a dungeon the next day when they're at the inn. And I, and basically, um, now Fumi up this, up to this point is trying to be a sensible guy. He's trying to make sure to manage his money. And, uh, he's trying to make sure that he can continue to, to do this, especially since he's going to have to rely on mine. And mine, uh, uh, is basically saying you should really try this wine that has come with the meal. Because it's like one of the best wines of the area. It's really great when you drink it. And now Fumi openly admits, like, I don't drink. Now, this doesn't insult mine. And I don't think it was intended for that. It's just like he doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't, he sees alcohol as worth, you know, he, he's not interested. So instead, he decides, I'm going to go turn in early because we're going to have to wake up early to go to this dungeon. And mine continues to drink. You know, he kind of leaves her in the in the tavern's uh, kitchen area or the, the dining area and goes to sleep. Oh, I also should say he takes a few coins and just kind of pockets them as well, just to make sure that he has something in case they lose their money or whatever. Um, he, I love the fact that he calls it like I'm being like a Japanese tourist. Um, he wakes up the next day and everything has been taken. So he's not wearing his armor. He he took that off. The armor's gone. His money's gone. Uh, everything except for the shield. And as soon as he comes out, he's like looking for mine and say like, we've been robbed. Are you okay? And the, the castle guard immediately swarm now for me. And he's like, oh, it's good. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, you know, I've, I've been robbed. And they say, no, you need to come and see the king. So this is where this is where the heavy moment and the controversy starts up with this is this scene. Now Fumi gets taken to the king and the king basically says that he is being charged with the rape of mine. So what happened was is that mine made it or mine went to Motoyasu. She pretty much staged the whole thing. Pretty much. Um but but this is from the viewer's point of view. 
she she goes to him half naked and basically says that the shield hero tried to rape me to which motoyasu let the the other heroes know and and let the king know and all of that and um and, and basically makes these accusations apparently the soldiers found a a piece of underwear in Naofumi's room when it wasn't there before and you know it's very clear that he's being set up and funniest thing all of the armor that that Naofumi bought is now on Motoyasu did you notice that mm -hmm. he's got his leather armor and just to make things even worse is as soon as he looks over to mine because mine has just told this hor this horrible story about how she was horribly sexually assaulted right and she looks at him and gives that you've seen this right where people pull down their eye and then they stick their tongue out mm -hmm. and she does it subtly enough so that nobody else sees it what is going on through your head when all of this happens that was just irritating as all did, did you want to kill her you wondered if there was something fishy about her. Decide, you know, if she went to a different party, and now all of a sudden she changed her mind to go with the shield hero. It it, it really feels like the shield hero is being set up, doesn't it? Mm hmm. So not only were there the bad rumors about him being rude and all that, but now you have the accusation that he has raped an adventurer, kind of thing. Uh, so like, it, it, in the span of two days. Now Fumi's reputation is just done. Like it's shattered. Uh any any goodwill that he might have had because of all this is gone. Um What do what do you think of Mine's actions here? Like like I, I don't mean to make this a hot button issue, but this is something that is happening in regular everyday society, where women are accusing men of raping them with no evidence, and so the, the guy's life gets destroyed. And then we find out weeks later they were lying the whole time. So what, what's going through your mind when that happens? Or, or when that happens and when you hear it and then you see it in this anime? Like compared to real life or just? Yeah, yeah, because this is happening in real life. Uh, so like the, the best example that I will give is like we just barely watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, yeah. Vic Mignogna got me too, just <laughs> like that. He has two Funimation voice actresses that have been friends with him for 10 plus years that are now accusing him of really inappropriate behavior. One of which implying that, that he raped her with no evidence. There's just something wrong. So, so that's why I'm saying like your opinion on that. There's just something wrong with those people. Like, is this something that you think women should be doing? They should, you know, you like, should... rape is rape is a serious accusation. Oh yes, and should be treated like that, right? This is not something you. What, what I'm what I'm asking, like, is this something you cry wolf about? And why would you want to do that, really? Because then people would be pestering you about it all the time. Yeah, well, but but also, what happens if you get found out? Then I think you would... you you get equally destroyed. But here's the here's the problem: the guy. His reputation doesn't get exonerated mm -hmm. after that because the rumor is still out. Mm -hmm. But the girl, because here's the thing, here's the thing that annoys me the most is like um, there, there was a, a situation in real life uh, where a woman said she was raped in college. And as a statement, mm -hmm. because she felt nobody was going to do anything for her because she was a minority she decided that she was going to go around to all of her, her classes with the mattress that she was raped on. So it, she was called Mattress Girl mm -hmm. uh, in, in the news. And everyone was like, oh, that poor girl, that horrible, horrible guy. Well, it turns out a couple of weeks later, we found out that she was basically trying to get him to have sex with her, but also have like kinky sex with her. So like, like S like S&M stuff. Mm -hmm. kind of thing and he told her no and so then she made up the accusation you want to know what's the sad reality this guy still can't get jobs this guy still can't go back to school this guy's life is ruined because of this girl mm -hmm. like that 
what what do you, when I tell you that, like, what what do you think? That's just unjustified. It's it's totally unjust. I love the fact that a lot of the a lot of these women that are doing it are oh for all justice and equality and social justice and equality, and yet they destroy people's lives so easily and don't and like mine don't give a crap about it. Like that's ridiculous, right? Oh yes. And you got to even look at it from like the parents' perspective. You destroyed their son's life. As a mom, what does that make you want to do to the girl? You put uh, a slapper or something. I'd want to do a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. I'd want to beat the crap out of her uh, for doing that because there's just, there's, it's one of the reasons that I actually like, I kind of support uh, some people saying that if you do something like that, the, and you get found out, the charge that happens to you should be twice as bad. Because not only did you, not only did you destroy the, not only did you make the accusation, but you destroyed the life of this other person. Because at that point, it's, you know, I, I hate to get political here, guys, but that's murder. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way that guy is ever going to get a job now. It doesn't even matter that he has the official charge. He has the rumor of it and anybody can find it. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, so, and especially, you could tell she was trying to take advantage of him just because the way he was... Yeah, like, you're, you're talking about mine. Mm -hmm. Because she tried to get him to drink. So that at that point... And, and, and this is the devious part of it. Is if he had drank, he'd question it, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. And she'd probably have him in the palm of her hands, too. But he didn't. And in turn, what... Uh, so this is all happening. And now Fumi... Like, his personality changes very like very Drastic. drastically he is now angry bitter cynic uh person um i would, mean would I, you say he's worse than ed at this point yeah pretty much yeah i, mean, I would be if it, that was uh -huh. know, yep and i wouldn't blame him for just like you know well especially if when, when he sees that from her and he sees that the spear hero has out all of his equipment oh yeah yeah, I'd be equally pissed, too. And I wouldn't blame him if he's like, well, then send me home if you don't want Exactly. Me. And, and but... even the king says, like, well, I would love to be able to do that, but we can't send you home unless you die. Like, like you, have to, you have to meet your end before the other heroes, uh, or before another hero can be summoned, kind of thing. And so at that point, like, it, it's one of those things where Okay, this was such a really because now for me up until this point he's having the time of his life, you know he's in this fantasy world he gets to go and and have this wonderful experience and now he finds out that nobody will trust him ever again he doesn't want to be there oh yeah by the way you can't leave so yeah the personality changes drastically he immediately says fuck you king pardon my French but fuck you king I don't want your help I don't want her help I don't want anybody's help I will do this on my own. And so at that point, we actually cut to uh, him going back to the armor store. Or no, he was he was actually going to go out and start questing again. Uh, but the armor store guy tracks him down. And, and you know, now everybody's talking about this. Like, he accosted this woman and da 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 da, -da. Uh, Also, I, I just want to point out, do you, what, what did you think of mine, like, upping the ante and going presumably naked, maybe a sheet? covering her to go cry into Motoyasu's chest. Well, she wasn't shy about that. No, not at all. And also, what what did you think of Spear Hero during all of this? He was probably like, ooh, a bonus for me. Probably, but I also kind of look at him as, uh, you know, there's an internet term that go that's going around now called simp or <laughs> cuck, mm -hmm. roughly. And it's basically that he just blindly believes her without questioning anything that they're saying. Now, granted, Ren and Itsuki do this, too, but Motoyasu is, like, the, the hero that she initially chose. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, exactly. So, um, at that point, we have um, the, the armorer guy is, like, sitting there going, okay, maybe there's, after talking to the shield hero, maybe there's more to this. He offers him some basic equipment, and Naofumi goes out, and he starts to level. He's not getting anywhere, but... Uh, what he starts to do is like he starts to need money 
to be able to to live and and to be able to to provide sustenance and all that. So what he starts doing with the vendors is like he starts selling the monster materials, but if they refuse to give him the the appropriate price, because the balloon guys don't hurt him, because his defense stats are so high, he starts hiding them in his cloak and says, oh, well, I can just unleash this on you if you don't want to do it. What did, what did you think of that that bribery? Well, if if they're going to take advantage of you, you might as well... Like he has a bunch of balloons just down his arm, all biting his arm. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if that's the only way to get them to cooperate, you know. Exactly. And, and so he basically kind of becomes aggressive in making sure that he gets exactly the same deals as everybody else who's getting the exact same materials as him. Um, and the other thing that I found was interesting is he goes to the, the local tavern, not the same one, but he goes to the tavern to get a drink and three guys basically come up and say, Oh, well, we'll be your adventurers. And he immediately says, okay, you can be my adventurers, but you're, what you earn in money is going to be based off the effort you make. Like he is literally creating this whole environment. Like he will protect himself because nobody else will. And he's like, okay, well, you know, you go get your own equipment, you go get your own supplies. And if you want to earn money, you've got to put out a decent amount of effort uh, to be in my party to which these guys actually try to rob him. And that doesn't work out, thankfully. Uh, yeah, like, now Fumi's not in a good place. And when, like, he's walking out in the streets after this, uh, a guy comes up and says, I might have a solution for you. And the episode kind of ends because we find out that this guy is in the black market. Specifically, he's in the slave market. And it, basically, he's offering to sell now Fumi a slave that can work for him. And that's that's where this episode ends. And this was like a big reveal, like a big 40 minute episode. Uh, what, what's your take on this series now that that, you know, we have this? Like, what, what did it do right? What did it do wrong? Oh, I just thought it was a really interesting opening. Did, were you mad after everything that happened in Alfumi? At the series? Well, that was a pretty upsetting just to see some guy who just, you know. Because gets... he's a good guy, right? Mm -hmm. And he got effed over really hard. Yeah, I resonated with this one because I, I follow a lot of the, the Me Too stuff. And, and Grant, here's the thing. I get that there's a lot of thing, a lot of people saying, well, this is a good thing for women's rights because women get taken advantage of. But what they don't aren't willing to acknowledge is that women are taking advantage of men, too. And trying to destroy people because they can. And, and an example that I've actually been following that I've, I've let you into this is the Amber Heard Johnny Depp situation oh, yes. where Johnny Depp lost his job as Grindelwald because Amber Heard, his ex-wife, accused him of abuse and rape and everything like that. Oh, yeah, by the way, turns out there's no evidence for that. And it actually looks like Amber was the abuser in the relationship. And unlike her johnny had receipts mm -hmm. so johnny had the evidence to be able to basically say yeah no i can back this up like and that's a similar situation here and, and that affects you because you're a harry potter fan and you liked johnny depp's performance as grindelwald mm -hmm. well when when she made these accusations he lost his position as grindelwald he was i believe initially set for a pirate six disney dropped him like a bad habit um yeah, he, he lost his his acting prestige overnight because of a false accusation. So, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. That's just it's just it's just really sad seeing those mm -hmm. those kinds of things happening to people. Yep. And and the reason I'm not doing this just to make this a political statement, guys, but it's that's why this is controversial. This is why Sites like Anime News Network didn't like Shield Hero. This is one of the main reasons, is that they portrayed this, and they felt that that was a poor portrayal because you should believe all women. You're a nurse, Andrea. Do women lie? Do women lie? Like... Yes. Like, the argument of believe all women is that women are so nurturing and caring, they never lie. Anybody can lie. Mm-hmm. But no, we need to believe all women because when, when rape happens, that's a serious deal and it's always true. 
I mean, wi- women aren't the only ones that are victims. Uh huh. Men are also victims. Uh huh. And what's even funnier, uh, I I didn't mention this, but in this episode, we find out that this is a matriarchy. Mel Remark is a matriarchy. What does that mean? It is led by a matriarch, a woman. Now, we see the king of Melramark, and I will tell you guys, we will eventually see the queen, and yes, she does have more authority, but this, this kind of makes you wonder, okay, so this is a woman who is very clearly taking advantage of the position that she has in this country. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I actually forgot to mention this. We find out that mine is the daughter of King Melramark. She's the... So not only did he rape a random adventurer, he raped the princess. Wow. Not only did that ha- or not only is that accusation being made, but now we know that the princess of this matriarchy is a cruel, sadistic bitch. I'm kind of surprised he even allowed her to be an adventurer. He did. We'll find we'll find out more stuff about it later. I, I can I can tell you there there's reasons. But yeah, so um did this episode do anything bad? And by that I mean it did anything to take you out of the experience. Uh no, not yet. So Nope. Nope. Uh character of the episode? Probably now for me. Yeah. Now for me. Uh because you know he's the guy that's getting screwed around with the entire time. Um, and then ultimately out of five, what, what was the best moment of this episode? Like, what, what was the moment that had you hooked in the most? I'd, I'd say the, the trial of Naofumi for me, because that, when I saw that the first time, like, cause this is my, this is my third time watching the show. Um, I was pissed because oh, yeah. like, the, the situ, I'm so sick and tired of these situations in real life. And this is happening in anime. Yeah. So, uh, I'd say the trial of now for me. What about you? Same here. Yep. And out of five, what would you give this? Uh, probably a four. A four, really? So, so it didn't hook you right away, or or were there no, problems? No, that was fine. It's just, but the thought of you know seeing that kind of stuff that we deal with in real <coughs> life is like, oh, here. Yeah, go. but in terms of the episode itself, like, were there points where you felt like when you say it's four out of five, that means it did something wrong. So at that point, like, did it drag? Or or, or did, it, did it, like, were there moments where you just weren't that interested? No, it just, it just. Because I, I would say a four out of five, too. And, and the reason I would say that is because when, when they're doing the whole leveling segment, like, the whole day with mine kind of drags until the end. Like, there really isn't much happening except these little details that look to more benefit mine than anything else. But. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just a slow build up. Yeah. To that, and I, I, it kind of got annoying to me that people just don't like the the horrible <clears throat> shielder kind of thing. Like, oh yeah. That was stupid. But okay. I mean, so... it looked like probably the spear was kind of like he's like, "Ha, eh, sucks to be you." While the other two are like, "We don't want to get involved in this." Whole... It's not that they said that they don't want to get involved because they equally condemned Naofumi, but they were condemning him based off of what spear hero had told them that's true so uh so at that point like yeah they they are looking down on him but they're looking down on him because you know they're Mm -hmm. hearing this third hand um i'm not saying i'm not saying they're better or worse i'm just saying like this is what happened uh this is how they're they're viewing it so i'd give it a 4.5 out of 5 but and and the reason that i would give it is because the leveling stuff kind of drags so then we go to episode two the slave girl so we this is where the second controversy comes in with this series already. Uh, so we're in the slave market, right? And this guy is willing enough to sell a slave to Naofumi who can who can kill things for him. And then at that point, he can get experience, he can level up, and he can actually get ready for these wa- or I'm sorry, not waves of destruction, waves of catastrophe is what they call them. And so. He starts looking around and it's it's basically like if you've ever gone have you ever gone car shopping on your own and had the salesman try to try to sell a car to you? It's kind of like that where they they immediately show you like their most expensive car 
and then they get to showing you a car that's more within your budget uh kind of thing because now for me doesn't have a whole lot of money keep in mind uh all of his money like all of his massive amount of money was spent by him in mind so he starts looking around and he notices a little fox girl I thought it was a raccoon fox or raccoon one of the two hmm. like she's got like little fox or raccoon ears uh but she's coughing she looks very sickly hmm. and uh he kind of looks at her and sees maybe some potential there and instead decides to take her. So they put a slave crest on her, on her chest. And that's basically, she can't disobey him. Uh, would like, if he, if she ever disobeys him, it'll cause pain kind of thing. And, uh, immediately in his game screen, he gets her as a, I think it's labeled as a companion or like a warlock pet, basically. Mm. Um, and so he, Asks her name, he finds, and keep in mind, we're talking a little girl that's like five at this point. Uh, so little, little girl, and he finds out her name is Raftalia. Now, the other thing I should point out is we learn a little bit about, a, about the hierarchy of races in this world, and Raftalia is a demi human. Demi humans are considered to be second class in this society. Because of the fact that there are properties about them that are weird and freakish. Uh, so much like, for example, uh, their growth cycle is a little bit more abnormal than others. Stuff like that. It, it's it's uh, it, they're basically con perceived as different and therefore lesser than humans. And then you have the beast men and the beast men were who now Fumi was being shown. Uh, so she's a demi human. And like we said, she's got little fox ears or little raccoon ears. And he immediately goes out and starts to get her equipment. Um, he, he basically gets her like a little basic armor set and a little dagger. Is, is that same? Yeah, it was a dagger. Right? It was, it was a dagger. She gets a short sword later. Uh, so it's a dagger. He buys it all super on the cheap. He then takes her to an inn and gets her some food. Uh, which she really appreciates because, you know, she hasn't been treated all that well. And uh, as we'll find out later, she's she's got a little bit of uh, tragedy in her life. And we also find out another interesting detail. So I guess ever since the trial that happened and, and Naofumi's change in personality happened, he hasn't been able to taste food. Mm. Like food is just bland. It's It tastes like nothing to him ever since then and he and he's getting kind of annoyed he actually orders like the cheapest thing on the menu and i think it's just because like it's it'll do the job and he doesn't have to worry about the taste kind of thing so him and him him and raftalia go and eat and then they go start their journey and the journey is basically trying to level up Naf raftalia so that she can then uh, protect or be his his damage dealer. And immediately she's a little girl. She doesn't want to kill things. She doesn't want to do damage. She just wants to live a peaceful life. And now Fumi has to get her to do it. So we do have kind of that rough uh, starting up because he has to order her. And that means the slave crest is going to go off and cause her pain. But the funny thing that starts happening in this episode is, yes, he's asking her to kill things and, and, and get him experience and help him with gathering and things like that. But he also is starting to show compassion towards her. He's buying her meals. He's helping her, like he's letting her sleep. She actually has a little cold and he's experimenting with a shield. And so he makes a cold remedy for her um, and tells her to drink it. This is actually one of the cool things that we start to see is he starts experimenting with the shield. And so he starts putting materials in the shield, uh, which are in turn unlocking other features, like this ginormous talent tree mm -hmm. of shields. And one of the ones that he finds is a leaf shield that actually can increase the potency of the herbs that he's using. Or he can increase the quality of the herbs when he sells them. 
then he gets like crafting shields and things like that. And so he starts utilizing that to care for her. So even though he's asking her to do this horrible thing, you got to go kill things and that's hard. You're, you're going to hurt yourself in the middle of that. He's taking care of her. Not what you would expect from a slave relationship, would you? No, not really. Yeah, yeah. Huh, it's almost like she's a little sister or something. So he's, the, the old now, like the Naofumi we know is still kind of in there. Mm-hmm. And still, and still is, is treating her right. Uh, but this is the other point of controversy with this series that I kind of want to bring up to you. Is not only are you are you making light of women who get abused and we should just believe them no matter no matter what. The other thing is is that he took a slave. Mm. Because that's a no no in in reality, right? Racism and slavery is wrong. So what would you what what do you think of that situation now that you've seen how he treats Raftalia? Well, if you can't get party members, you have to go where you can get someone to help. So is, is he? So just to kind of reemphasize here, is he treating her badly in your eyes? No, he, he's, he's treating her like a like a older brother would. Yeah, kind of thing. Okay, so the, and eighty percent of this episode is just the relationship with Gratalia, especially when he finds out that she uh, cannot stand the sight of blood. Why? Because, well, she she lived in a quiet little village with her mother and father. And then one of the things I kind of glazed over here, because it's more important here, before the heroes were even summoned, the first wave of catastrophe hit. And uh, the king of Melramark, like, he sent out his heroes and everything like that, but they barely were able to hold... The, the way that they describe it, they were barely able to hold off the wave. So at that point, that's why they summoned the, the cardinal heroes. Uh, so she was in this village and then the wave hit and immediately her parents were peaceful in this village and were trying to run off to safety to be able to take care of Raftalia and they get cornered at uh, a cliff over the sea and immediately, uh, sacrifice themselves to be eaten by a monster so that Raftalia can survive. And so this is why she detests the sight of blood. She actually saw this creature eat her parents. So she hates the sight of blood because of this. So you have that. And he kind of tries to help her overcome this. Like, you know, she has nightmares every night and she screams every like that. And so he like he comforts her because he he stays up late at night working on crafting. Um, You know, he's like doing everything he can to make money so that they can survive and so that she'll wake up and he'll comfort her and, and put her back to bed kind of thing. Um, so we have that, but eventually when they go to a, like to a local mine where monsters from the first wave are still kind of hanging out to go get materials and also experience. Um, I should also say by now she's upgraded from a dagger to a short sword because they, they earned up enough money to get a better weapon for her. And they actually come across a, a beast in this mine that is cl- similar to the one that killed her parents. Like, it was a big three-headed wolf thing, and this is a two-headed wolf thing. And she Kind of like a Cerberus-like thing. Kind of, yeah. Um, and she freezes up, because she's immediately remembering, you know, her parents' death, and she's traumatized. And so he's kind of holding it off, and th- that's how this kind of work, this relationship works, is like, he takes the damage, and then she goes in for the kill. So he's taking this damage and wanting her to come in and, and help her or help him out. And she just can't. She's frozen in fear. And now Fumi finally just says, screw it. Get out of here. Uh, if you can't do this for me, then I'm not going to order you or anything like that. I'm just get out of here. Save yourself. Kind of like how the parents did. And that kind of sparks Raftalia to gain the courage to kill the beast. So now that Raftalia has been spurred on and she stabs the beast, they are finally able to kill it. They get a lot of experience out of it. They're able to level up quite a bit. Um, That's kind of where this episode ends because like this, 
sets up the relationship between Raftalia and Naofumi. Uh So, final thoughts on this episode. Like, what what did you think of the horrible slave relationship that the shield hero has gained with this little slave girl? Well, he treats her right, so... Mm -hmm. Well, and, and a lot of people don't like to look at it this way, but... Where was he going to find party members? At least none that would take advantage of him. No if they adventurer tried. in the area were gonna were gonna help him. Yeah, he was gonna get thieves. Mm -hmm. they we're gonna try and steal from him. So, what made you? Th I love the people that are that are so sanctimonious and righteous bull bullcrap. Where was he gonna get party members? Pretty much nowhere. So he had to go and resort to things like the black market. So you can get mad at him and say he's not. Like, yeah, he might have been wrong, but he's no better either because he went off and, and did the slavery. But here's the thing. When you take away, uh, like, a man, or like a man or a woman's reputation and they need these things, what else are you going to do? Like, if you need medicine and your reputation is ruined, Andrea, are you going to go to are you going to go to Walgreens or are you going to go to the black market? Because who's going to sell it to you? Yeah, because the black market <coughs> will, they'll take anything for any price, you know? Oh, they'll yeah. screw you over. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, like, um, if you take away the ability for people to purchase something that they want, they will find another way to get it. Uh, you know, I love having this argument brought to people because they just don't understand. In the 20s, we had Prohibition. You took away alcohol, and everybody liked alcohol. So what happened? They People found a way to make alcohol. Yep. They did black markets. They did what were called little little bars called speakeasies that were uh, like that were innocent in the police's eye, but ultimately, when the police weren't looking, they were giving alcohol out. So if you give if you take away the option, people will find a, a way, way to, to do it. Right. To make up for that. Exactly. So at that point, I mean, yeah, you can say it's wrong, but you gave him no other option. It's not like he could go to the, the local adventurers guild and get another party member. That was not possible. So at that point, yeah, you, you could say what he did was wrong too, but I say screw your sanctimonious bullshit because you gave him no other option. And now you can attest to that, right? He had no other option. And so in turn, he took on this little girl and he treated her right. Is it is it really a master slave relationship or is it a brotherly relationship? It just seems more like a sibling type. Really. Yeah, he, you know, like his little brother. He just took care of his little sister mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. That's what happened. Uh, so were, was there anything this episode did wrong with that? I, Not I, that I good fun. I can't fault too much. I mean, there, there's, <clears throat> there are moments where I think they hammered home. Because now, now Fumi has like this really cynical personality. Um, and they really hammered it home in this episode. Uh, that he, is, he just doesn't believe the world is there for him. He doesn't want to be there. All he's going to do is prepare for the wave so that he can leave kind of thing. And and so in essence, he also kind of shows that even though he treats his, his slave with care, he treats Raftali with care. He doesn't really care about her until he says run away. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like then he starts to show that he cares. So that would be kind of the thing is like, they really hammered home the cynicism and they, I think they, they hit it about two steps back. Kind of thing. So I would give it a 4.5 as well. What would you give it? Yeah, 4.5. Uh, character of the episode, would we give it to Naofumi or Raftalia? I'm kind of tempted to give it to Raftalia. Yeah. It, it, it's Cause a... now, I mean, Naofumi has good moments, but Raftalia has to overcome a lot in this episode. Oh, definitely. In order to be able to help Naofumi. Especially have to brave the attempt of actually slaying... Yep. The monster that killed, that was very similar to what killed her parents. And even more importantly, like, she sees the kindness that he's giving her. And so, mm -hmm. like, she was afraid of being a slave, but now she's kind of 
gained an affection for him. Not not in a bad sense, but like she gets that he cares for her and he and she wants to care for him. Mhm. So, yeah, I'd give it a 4.5. Did, did you say you were going to give that that same? Yeah. All right. And then we have uh episode 3, Wave of Catastrophe. So, uh some time has passed since episode 2. They've been able to level up quite a bit. In fact, I think they go from like level 3 to level 19. Um and some time has passed as well because Raftalia is like she was like four or five in episode two. Easy to say she's like 14, 15 at this point in terms of how she looks. Somehow I thought she was a little bit older when she was littler. But... She, she looks like she might be like four or five, maybe six. Oh, kind of thing. I thought but... she would be more like. Eight or ten. Eight to okay, ten. maybe. I don't like, know. I'll I'll just judge you on that. So, like, what would she be now? Like fourteen, fifteen? Yeah. Okay. So, so it feels like a couple of years have passed. It, it isn't that because demi humans age quicker. Mm-hmm. But uh, she is older, and she's able to do a lot more for now for me. So this is one of their trips back to the kingdom to go and sell their monster materials and all that stuff, as well as maybe. Get some new equipment for both uh, for both Nalfumi as well as Raftalia. Because I haven't mentioned this before, but the reason that they know about the Waves of Catastrophe is that there's this giant dragon hourglass that foretells when the next wave is going to happen. It's a giant hourglass that is constantly ticking down. And Nalfumi has had no access to it, but the other heroes have. So they were aware of it, but he really wasn't. So at that point, the the time of the the next wave is upon them. And so they have to get ready for that. So they they actually go and get a a magic iron sword for Raftalia. And they start to work uh, work out like how are we gonna do this with with Nafumi because he doesn't really want to get like plate armor. Uh he wants to be able to move around like he currently can. Uh, and so they, they start to kind of handle that that issue, but uh, then they find out that they have to go to the Dragon Hourglass to uh, figure out, like, how much actual time is left before the, the wave happens. To which we get to have our reunion with the Sword, Spear, and Bow Heroes, and mine. Because they all go and meet... Uh, at the Dragon Hourglass and immediately start hammering now for me about, you know, the, 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 what is it they call him? The, the, the demon shield hero or whatever. The, the treacherous shield hero or something like that. Something like that. And that's when Raftalia gets to start hearing about the rumors about the, the evil shield, the evil shield hero, hero. And she gets to hear about like, the accusations that that mine made and everything like that, and so she she's dealing with that. But now for me is he doesn't want to deal with any of this, and he is just bitter as like like his cynicism goes up to eleven at this point. Is that safe to say? Mm-hmm. Like he is just nasty, including to Raftalia. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. Just really quick, your thoughts on meeting everybody again and having Raftalia hear all the horrible things about the evil shield hero. Like, how do you, how do you think she took it? Because up until this point, um, Raftalia has actually been kind of protective of now for me. She wants to make sure that their money's being used right. And that in fact, she's the one that kind of pesters for, for new armor for the shield hero instead of a, an armor set for her. So what, what did you think when, you saw her hear all of the the nasty rumors. I think she's kind of in disbelief just yep. because of him not him taking care of her, even though you know mm-hmm. he's considered probably he's the hero and she's a lower class than him. Well, and on top of that, we we didn't talk about this in the second episode, but it's it's more prevalent here. Um, her parents told her about the shield hero and and that they. That, um, according to her parents, like the shield hero was the hero of the people and he was the one that took care of everybody kind of thing. And so she actually had like an admiration for the shield hero before that. So, yeah, because I think they kind of see 
the sh- the shield hero is kind of like the the defender of the people more, whereas the others were kind of like, well, they attack with force. And- mm. Yeah. So so like the demi humans in the in the village, like they they <laughs> revered the shield hero because the shield hero was like he helped them too. Whereas remember, there's 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 like a second class citizen kind of thing going on with demi humans. And so the regular people of Melramark don't necessarily help the stinking demi humans. Um, and so the, the impression there is like, you know, maybe the previous shield heroes have always been uh, fair and just to everybody instead of just that. Whereas the spear, the sword and the bow, they've been living in the kingdom. And so they've seen like the, the, the hatred of demi humans and probably even kind of adopted it too. Mm-hmm. But um, we don't see we don't see that with Roth Talia. I should point that out. Like nobody treats her bad. But mm-hmm. one thing that is interesting is that Motoyasu um, kind of confronts Roth Talia about why she would help the the wicked shield hero. And she doesn't really say anything. This is kind of what you were talking about. She's kind of in disbelief. Well, but... she, well, she's kind of like, well, you know, I can't believe you're talking about the way to him because he doesn't treat me the way that you're yep. making those accusations. Exactly. Um, I also have no problem saying this, but given the evidence that we have with Motoyasu, um, there's a term in the anime community called lollycon, mm-hmm. and uh, it's safe to say Motoyasu is a lollycon. All right, he's because here's the thing: like he was he was kind of ogling over mine before, and now he is. He is kind of ogling over Raftalia because she's she's more his type and she's she's not into him at all. But I, I like the fact that mine kind of gets a little irritated by that. Uh, so. So we have this. We now know that it's going to be the next day that the 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 wave happens and they don't have to worry about where the wave will strike because the way that the dragon hourglass works is that they will teleport to where the wave is so they can go and fight it. Um, So they spend the night at the inn and Raftalia is kind of sleeping, but kind of troubled because of what she's heard. And so she's trying to make sense of it. Whereas now Fumi who like now Fumi, we've seen this entire time, like in the night he crafts, he, he works on potions. He works on whatever will get him money or, or that he can utilize. And so there's like that that weird moment where she maybe wants to ask him about it, but he normally this this works out in anime that like they try to ask it and then they uh, they bug her off, they go back to bed. But in this case, Naofumi wouldn't even let her ask the question. Like the whole like you could see he's very angry with, because like all I'm guaranteeing you it's because all those memories came back. And he, you know, he was reliving the trial all over again, and he didn't want to talk about it. <clears throat> so he 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 used a little bit of occupational therapy here, and he just dove himself into his crafting, and and so he could get his mind off of it. Um, and so before Raftalia can even ask the question, he just kind of tells her to go back to bed. Um, then the next day, the wave hits. And the wave uh, immediately, like, they're immediately teleported to where it is. And it turns out it is at a local village uh, called Loot that they go, that that actually Naofumi and uh, and Raftalia go to in between the castle to sell things, to, to, to get money. So at that point, like, they they know, like, the people of the village. And so they, they immediately rush to go help out the village. And help try to evacuate. Whereas the spear, the sh- the sword, and the bow, like they just go off and start fighting monsters. Like it- it's one of those things where you kind of notice that they don't really care. They- they're treating it like a video game. They don't care about the NPCs of the video game. They care about themselves. Mm-hmm. So they immediately go off and start killing monsters, and everything comes out. Like every RPG monster that you could possibly imagine. And now Fumi and Raftalia immediately rush over to the village of Loot, start evacuating the citizens. In fact, now Fumi tells uh, Raftalia to go evacuate the citizens, get them in the mine, and he will round up all the monsters and see if he can hold them off until the, the castle guard get there. 
So he's like running around and grabbing a bunch of aggro and, and using all of his abilities and everything like that. And Rothalia takes everybody up to the mine. And eventually, uh, like the big boss monster comes out and she sees it from the mine. And she's like, no, I've got to go help Master Nalfumi. Because that's what she calls him. She, he's Master Nalfumi to her. And so she rushes off. And in fact, because of this, the other thing that, that's kind of cool that happens is everybody sees Nalfumi taking care of the villagers. So the villagers start to help. They're like, we'll grab our pitchforks and we'll, we'll help you we'll out. We'll grab whatever we can. Mm-hmm. To... They'll defend the village, which that was kind of cool to see, right? Mm-hmm. Like they'll defend their livelihood. You don't have to just leave it to the cardinal heroes, especially since it's taking forever for the castle guard to get there. Um, so they're taking care of this big, bad uh, boss monster and the shield the, or the spear, the sword and the bow are nowhere near the village. They're they're off. Fighting yeah. random. They're off fighting random enemies. And I actually should also point out the other thing too. Uh, they actually, uh, Naofumi does get a set of armor for this. It's like barbarian armor that was, that oh, was okay. crafted for him. So he's able to take a lot of this abuse, but. But it's nice that he still gets at least some support from that blacksmith or that guy who yeah, supplies. Right? The, you are, know. Are you liking the blacksmith? Yeah. Yeah, least... he's a nice guy. And, well, and remember, he gave the magic iron sword to Rotalia, so mm-hmm. he's been upgrading her uh, over time, and he's mm-hmm. actually been doing it on the cheap as well, mm-hmm. because Naofumi's still the stupid, like, obsessively cynic, um, and he's he's treating the blacksmith like everybody else, like everybody's going to screw him, whereas Rotalia is kind of seeing that he's he's taking care of them, mm-hmm. um, and he's giving them benefits and, and discounts and things like that. So, um, yeah, th- this battle continues on. They find a way to be able to finally kill the boss monster, both with the, but just with Rathalia and Nalfumi, because all the little monsters are being taken care of by the villagers. I especially love the one thing that he did was uh, he tried to group up a lot of the, Nalfumi tried to gr- group up a lot of the, the little monsters over at the watchtower of the village and then he lit the watchtower on fire so they would all die. And then he jumped out of the building and hurt himself. Yeah, he's he's feeling actual pain with this. Like, this is a real world to him. And, and so that was actually a cool strategy that they pulled off. But they eventually, they kill off everything. They get all the really good experience. And that's just in time for the the castle guard to come in. Um, And they're, so they killed off the big boss, but they're still cleaning up all the little guys. Um, and so the castle guard come in, they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll help out. Oh, wait, the shield heroes here. We'll go help out the other heroes. Mm. But some of the guards actually see like they, they risk their lives. They're the only hero here, the only cardinal hero here to save all these villagers. So like a little, a little, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a little unit breaks off and they, they go to help them. Well, it looks like some of them are kind of having conflict of, you know, yeah, because they're, they're seeing that the shield hero is actually caring about the people. And instead their captain only cares that it's the wicked shield hero. I'm going to go and help the other heroes, which are off. Yeah. In the, off in the distant field somewhere killing. But, But this is kind of a regular thing that we'll, we'll start to see is like, you know, th- this, for lack of a better term, segregation is happening where the, the wicked shield hero, he doesn't help anybody, right? Except then you see him going out of his way, braving really dangerous odds, and everybody knows the shield hero can't kill anything. So they look at this and they go, he is risking his life with no help. Like, they, they don't really see Raftalia's help. And then you think of the spear and the bow, and they've got these big parties, and ever like that and they're they're off killing monsters too but they're not they're not protecting civilians so some of these people are probably looking at that and going we're gonna go help that guy because that's what we want to do we mm-hmm. want to help the civilians we don't want to just kill monsters and so they have that that kind of weird respect that starts to to happen between them and they don't necessarily look down on the shield hero like everybody else does so i kind of like that but like he's winning over so like you you start to see in these in episode two and three, like he starts to win over the people. Well, yeah, because they're probably in their minds. They're probably like kind of yeah. starting to question on whether if the rumors, what they hear are actually exactly. true. Cause... And, and not only that, I, I forgot to mention this, but like 
um, you know, the village of loot. So Raftalia and Nafumi have been bouncing mm-hmm. between those to sell things. But when they're in the village, like Nafumi goes out of his way to be able to help people. A lot of it is for the money, but like he's intentionally remember that he has that herb potency or in the crafting potencies because of his shields. So he intentionally like goes, Oh, you're ill. Okay. I'll give you this medicine. And that way you get the increased chance of it curing you. Mm-hmm. And so he goes out of his way to start helping people, you know, cure their mothers and their grandmothers and their grandfathers and taking care of everybody. And so the villages outside of the kingdom start to gain, you, you start to see this. They start to gain a respect for Nalfami that the kingdom doesn't have Mm -hmm. because they're constantly being peddled that the wicked shield hero is making things worse. Right. And so that's kind of a cool thing to see happen Mm -hmm. um, is that the villagers start to see, well, maybe the kingdom is wrong about this guy. Um, Now, granted now for me this entire time, he's still cynical. He's not, he's not coming to people with smiles. He's, he's just kind of got a blank expression. He's, He's still mad at this society that, that shunned him. But at least at that point, he's not like lashing out at them in anger. Kind of thing. Not like he did with the other heroes. So, uh, that's, that's pretty much this episode, uh, because the wave happens and then the kingdom is going to reward the four Cardinal heroes for holding off the waves. And that's kind of where this ends is like the heroes kind of group up again to go to the kingdom to be rewarded. Um, and so we actually get to see mine and Motoyasu come and see what, what, uh, the shield hero was doing in the village and, and they kind of brush it off as like, well, you know, we were off taking care of all the bigger monsters and all that. It's like beginner's luck. Yeah. That's basically how they, they kind of look at it because they still look at the shield hero as the weakling in this they're probably they're probably just as surprised like wow you actually survived the first way what's what's funny about this is that okay so we we get to see the level of raftalia and and naofumi where do you think that they are like you know they've been able to get a lot of experience right so they're probably a good deal higher in level than naofumi you'd think right okay I, i i'm just i'm just curious in that in that sense like, do you think that they've they've been able to do as much with their weapons as as Nalfumi has been able to do with his? Because you gotta you gotta think here. Like, yeah, they're going out in their parties and all that, but they're also getting pampered by the kingdom because they get to come back to the castle and and sm- you know nice uh, soft beds and everything like that. Whereas Nalfumi has to sleep in the dirt. You know, he has to go out and just earn a living, mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Whereas they get kind of pampered. So. Do we so, think that they're equal in power, more in power, less in power compared to Nalfumi or? I didn't see what their levels were. Did they show? We never see them. Mm. Because remember, everything is being seen from the perspective of Nalfumi. So like he doesn't get shown their status. He gets shown his. And so we only ever get like the level and, and I mean, experience I think, of yeah, his I th- party. I think uh, at least Raftalia is slightly higher than Nalfumi. Yes. But, that makes sense, but what do we think that she's less level? Like, like, do you think they're do, less? Do we le- think? Yeah, do we think that Spear Hero is the same level as Raftalia or more or less? Jeez, I would hope that they're not more, but just because of you don't know, right? Yeah. Because they're getting pampered by the castle, whereas now Fumi has to earn everything. So that that's an interesting kind of contrast that we get here. Yeah. And you also start to see uh, in the castle, there's a love for the three heroes, but not necessarily the four uh, because of the wicked shield hero. Uh, so there's a lot of love for the spear, the sword, and the bow, but not not the shield. So that, that starts to happen too. But yeah, that's where the episode ends. They're, they're going to go and get rewarded, but do we, do we see any kind of reward coming now for me's way? I can't imagine they're going to give him anything. I don't think so either. Uh, and frankly, uh, I think that it's if they be... if they did, it'd I mean, be Nalfumi just... doesn't even want to go. Yeah, I so... mean, if they did, they'd be just like, "Well, here's your reward. Go on your way." And you well, think, yeah, but like, I don't even think they'll, they'll go that far. They'll give him trash as as a reward. I don't think he'd be like, "Well, I'm not accepting your reward." How, how do you think Raftali is going to take the treatment 
that that now Fumi's probably going to get at the kingdom, at the castle. Well, they'll probably be just like because she has a she has a degree more respect for the shield hero because of her parents mm-hmm. than anybody else does. So, well, that's going to be something to see, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you worried about it at all? Well, she certainly had built confidence, you know. After a while, she she definitely does have a love and respect for Nalfumi. Mm-hmm. So at that point, it makes me it makes you wonder how she's gonna have how she's gonna handle when the uh, you know the ru- like rumors kind of get hammered at her at, at this castle because obviously the king's gonna probably bring it up. There probably will even be an argument. Like look, I I actually think maybe the king will try to not reward him, and Nalfumi <laughs> will probably bring it up. She's mm-hmm. like, I saved your ass too. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then maybe at that point she gets confirmed, like, or she gets to hear mine's story at this point. Well, then I think sh- hopefully she'd be like, well, you know what, you may make those claims, but I don't see them the same way you guys do. So you don't. So you think if she if she gets confirmation of them or whatever that she's still gonna side with now for me? I would think so. In that regard, okay. Uh, what what tells you that? Just well, the relationship. I think she's just loyal to him, you know. She's very no, she's very loyal to mm-hmm. him. Uh, remember, he saved her. He he mm-hmm. made her well. He you know he fixed her sicknesses and her wounds and all that. It's possible. Do you think Nalfumi thinks she'll stay? I think he's kind of concerned because he'll probably feel like he'll be well, and and for good reason, right? Well, yeah, like cause... everybody has ditched him in this world. As soon as they hear this crap story. So at that point... Even when he thought mine was a party, decided to party member with him, and yeah. she just ends up using him. Mm-hmm. Well, what's funny, too, is we find out uh, later that uh, after he he parties up to uh, Raftalia, that, like, in your interface, in, in his interface, like, you're supposed to see your party members. And... He didn't even get that with mine. So it's just like, huh? Like he keeps on getting additional information of how she manipulated and, and treated him. So yeah, nice chick, right? If you met mine in real life, what would you do to her right now? I think I would want to deck her. Beat the crap out of her? Oh yeah. 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 Cause yeah, Andrea doesn't really, get the whole belief like you, you've dealt with enough people that lie that the that, that believe all women narrative wouldn't necessarily be a thing for you mm. so uh final thoughts on this episode uh good what was good about it what was bad about it i couldn't think of too much bad about it i i think i think it was a good episode um going back into the kingdom and have a little bit of of lull at the the church of the dragon hourglass where the, the heroes get to meet back up again. That was kind of, yeah. Cause you know, like you as the viewer, did you really want to see the sword, the spear and the bow ever again? Well, it's always interesting to find out where they are, you know, once in a while. But I mean, like just from a perspective of like, well, they, they ran out on now for me. So at that point, like, do you, do you even care about them or do you care about now for me? Well, of course you're going to care about the shield hero at all times, but yeah. I just wouldn't want to see, you know, who are the other supposedly heroes, you know, just be go off and you never hear or see them again. Okay. And it's like, well, and what's the point of them being introduced in the first place? Okay. So at that point, that's, uh, so we have, was, was there anything bad that we could think of? Not, well, wait, I just asked this. Uh yeah, so we we basically asked it. Who is the character of the episode? Do you think? Probably Nalfumi. Yeah, because... Nalfumi. Nalfumi got to earn a lot of people's respect. By the way, what do you think of his barbarian armor? It was interesting. Armor. It's weird and angular, right? It, yeah. it kind of makes you wonder. Like, is he gonna is he gonna get stuck in doorways? <laughs> kind of thing. Like a big bulky guy. Well, well, yeah, he, he's actually pretty small, right? Um, I, I'm I'm not saying that he probably hasn't gained a little bit of muscle since he's been there, but well, I, like you have this big chest piece that has like this big angle sticking out, and then you have these angles sticking out of his knees and his arms. He doesn't really have shoulder blade, uh, shoulder armor, but you, you just kind of look at that and go, "Wow, that that's uh that's gonna get you stuck indoors." 
but but I did okay. like I did like the whole thing when he's like, I don't need this. We need to be taking care of her armor, her weapons, and she's like, No, we need to make sure you don't die. And yeah, I, I like that too. Um, I think the only reason he did that was was because aside from the big monster, nothing really hurts him. Uh, because the shield has given him so much defense that you know he doesn't really feel anything. Hence, why he still he still has like the little balloons on his arms and legs, and he utilizes that to to make sure he gets the advantages. But uh, so uh, maybe that's why. Like he doesn't see a point to having armor of his own when he's not feeling anything, and so he's like, "No, protect my my damage dealer because she's got to be out in the thick of it." So maybe that's why. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting deal that's happening here, right? She's kind of doting on him just as much as she he's doting on her. Oh, and by the way, he's still getting very frustrated at the fact that he still can't taste anything. And by the way, he's not telling anybody that he can't taste anything. Mm. So that's an interesting t- thing, too. But out of five, what would you give this? I'd probably give it a five. Yeah, I, this one in particular, because... This kind of gave you the the actual concept of of what the stakes are in yeah. this show, um, especially when we get back to the horrible society that is labeled the evil shield hero, and then we get to see who now Fumi is. So he's going to go and help people regardless of who you know where they live, whereas the other heroes are very much playing this out like it's a video game. Yep, they treat it as a game. Yeah, and you kind of get that viewpoint from them too, right? They they are all treating this this like it's wow, like it's not real. Whereas he has to go out and live in the world, so it's real to to now for me. So yeah, uh, I think that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode then, because I don't see any need for like end of the end end of the episode awards or anything like that. So when we come back, we will be doing episodes four through six. Uh, and we'll see what happens when uh, the king tries to reward the wicked shield hero. Until then, we'll see you guys next time.